W N Nine Five H O with your host Ultra Magnus. Well, it's not Friday. It wasn't Sunday. Well, I'll take a Monday for the Mondays, and uh, we'll get our weekly video out. Um, I'm just basically reviewing some things regarding the next few seasons, other leagues, and uh, some background stuff so people can get a better idea of what my brain is doing these days. Uh, I haven't been active on Discord because I'm working your mama. Your mama's bent over. I'm pumping her and I'm putting your lunch money on your bureau. All of you. Um, yeah, I've just been swamped with work and trying to do some side projects to be able to get everything up in s to speed on other leagues and potential other leagues. So you might be seeing the screen and seeing the NHA, the PCHA, the NHL, WCHL, the WHA, and the KHL. Uh, this document is going to be my mecca for explaining future seasons as well as future leagues, as well as current leagues and side leagues, if anybody's interested. So basically, I started a database on all players ever to play NHL of some sort or secondary leagues that were in existence. So basically, these are to create some better some better understanding of how ratings are going to be made for future seasons. Uh, our WNHL seasons are basically only rookies will be applied to this moving forward. Um, if we do a reset for newbies and uh, inexperienced players or lesser caliber, uh, they are going to be basically having this available to them starting from the 95 season will be the same ratings as 95, but 96 onwards will be from this document. Um, there's a lot of tabs on the bottom, a lot of information. I'm still building it. I uh, started at 1910. You can see over here on the left, there's a 1910 to 1917 was the O'Brien Cup, which was the pre, uh, precursor for the Stanley Cup, which the Stanley Cup was only brought in. Well, it was brought in in 1909, but the Montreal Wanderers and the Ottawa Senators, actually, both of them won the Stanley Cup in the same season because Ottawa had won the Stanley Cup in their own league, and then they joined the NHA and then basically competed against the Wanderers and lost. So basically the Wanderers became the second team within a season to win a Stanley Cup, and it's never happened ever since then. So, and it won't ha ever happen again <laughs> since then. Then you have the Patterson Cup, which is the PCHA, which is the Pacific Coast Hockey Association, which ran from 1911 to, I think, 1922 or 24. And then that was brought in at the same time as the WCHL which was the West Coast Hockey League. And then basically from there, they started branching down and then everybody got absorbed into the NHL. So players like Cy Denny, um, who are some other ones, George Vesna, yeah, Clint Benedict, all those great, the NHL greats basically were absorbed into it, but they all played in one or the three leagues all at once. Um, then we had some rule changes. This is going to be incorporated with rank and rule changes. So basically it gives you a breakdown of the historical progression of the NHL and how the NHL evolved with the rinks. So to give you an idea, if we start a league in 1910, the rink will look like the picture here. There will be no lines, just a gray screen with one red dot in the middle of the ice. No logos, just team names, maybe our team logo at the startup menu. But this is not meant for people to be like, hey, uh, the, my players are going to be amazing and everything else like that. The players are shit fucking hot dumpster mess if you're an nhl 94 fan the first probably like 20 seasons are probably best suited if you want to get used to 95 play 95 but from 1910 the players are so slow they can't hit can barely pass and the goalies are garbage they're like maybe one or two goalies every season are decent the other ones are garbage. And then once you get the PCHA teams in there, you get some really good goalies because their defensive system was a lot better. But overall, it just breaks down, and you can see the whole transition of how it goes to. And then, it, actually, it was quite a popularity thing back in 1948-49 where they painted the inside the net so that the, the referees could see if the puck was in because the, the puck was pretty closely resembled to the ice. But since then... It got painted white, and then the following season, they said the popularity, because they wanted it, they painted the whole ice white. So it just made things interesting. So 1948-49 was the first year where they actually painted the whole rink. 
So it'll give you a little perspective. And you just see how the rings progress. I'm going to be adding some of the rules in there. Then the standings. This is basically every single season that broke down of statistics. So these statistics are not only like here for aesthetic pleasing of your own eye and all your stats like Sutton and your fucking data analysis. You'd be perfectly fine. You can export this to yourself and do whatever you want on the back end. The player rating system will not change based on this. There is some components in here that will benefit it. Wolfie, your GM skills suck anyways. Just because you landed Eric Lindros does not mean you're the second coming of God. But Wolfie, I pat you on the head. I'm coming for you in the Bruley Cup. So fucking get your little doggy hands on. And we're going to get going. I'm going to fucking pound you. And then you got every season. You have the which leagues they came a part of. And then the logos there as well. So you can scroll through. I'm up to, I think, 1942-43. I'm in that right now. Then there's team averages. This basically shows you the breakdown of like which leagues, how many games, how many goals, goals per game, shutouts, shots, saves. These are the averages, save percentage, goals against average, and then like goal differentials and power plays. Like power play goals only started really being taken care of in 1933. Uh, ratings. So this is basically what I'm doing. So we're going to have any of those salary cap leagues. I got to figure out a formula for the previous seasons, but here are all the ratings. You can see the years, 1918, 1920, 21, 22, 23. You're going to start seeing some players with some salary stuff. I took that from what if sports. And basically the rating systems are very, very solid. There is going to be some players that are going to have some benefit over others because like say for an example, Joe Malone was the fastest player during his time. He will probably have like fives and sixes in speed and agility where everybody else might be twos and threes. So you're going to have that superstar on the ice because there was a superstar on the ice. Um, players. This is going to be something to show you a breakdown. So you can search for any player. You can go Joe Malone, delete it and out, Joe Malone. And there's Joe Malone there and gives you a breakdown of his career once it loads in. Shows his salary and then his statistics off to the right and his rating system. Like, just stuff like that. Then it also has their real name, nickname, size, weight, jersey number, and a little photo as well. Just something to add more detail to this so people can get a better understanding of, like, how the league progresses and, like, how players progress and so on and so forth. Um, player info. This is going to basically be, like, everything I've been doing, it's going to have all the photos of every single player that I was able to find their nicknames in their rookie years. So you'll know which rookies are coming in as well. The player calculator. This is my gold and butter that calculates everything. I'm still working on this. This is the stick handling factor that causes a lot of the problems, but I'm working through it. Um, player averages. This shows you the average age, like statistic based for every single player from every single era for every year. Uh, player stats is the same thing. It shows you the player stat breakdown. You can see along the top what statistics. And then the same thing for goalies. And then like all time I'm creating like who's the fastest players agility players and so on and so forth so like we were saying puss you had mentioned what i'm going to actually do for season season eight we will be going to a two league system I, there's no way around it there's no way to like pat people on the back for doing well and like penalizing people for like just toughing it out so there will be a minor league the minor league will still compete with the same players and draft classes and everything else like that. However, the minor league team will have all the top picks, except one and two, which is the Bruley Cup, uh, what's it called, which is the Shitty Bill Cup. One and two get that, no matter what. Then it's all the minor league teams. Then it goes everybody from Shitty Bill on to the Bruley. So you could be a first round draft pick, but there's like 40 teams in the league instead. These, and I'm sorry to say this, I'm saying it now. It doesn't matter if I'm going to say it. It's going to have Don Don. It's going to have Matty A, MN Yoda. It's going to have guys so they can get their skill sets up with people around their same skill set. Yes, you could still be like, oh yeah, I want to play against the best players. You can XC against them. XC and practice from there. But until you're ready to play in the season, I'm even contemplating fucking putting Lloyd in there. Dan Becker, you fucking ding dong. Not playing any of his games. He's gone MIA. And uh, you, I would put you down there as a penalized thing. So Segathon had posted something saying, well, what happens if like players are not playing their games and not playing caught up? You get relegated. I don't give a shit. Like, you know what? At the time, we're, at, we're seven seasons in. Some of you have played five seasons. You know what the fucking deal is. This is not like, oh my god, I didn't know this is what we're supposed to do. Fucking pull up your pants, look at Discord, there is an event tab. An event tab at the top that tells you when the fucking season ends, how much time you have. Schedule fucking, carve out some time. 
It's not difficult. I know people have lives. I know people have work. I have it. I'm not barely on Discord, but I'm still fucking building a system for everyone to have more fun. So get your fucking cock out of your ass if it's that big. And if it's not, get your thumb out of your ass. I don't care. I'll run you down with fucking Heinz's red fucking death truck. I don't care. I'll get the maroon van and fucking run you over. I don't care. No more Mr. Commissioner. We, we're having a great community. We're having great leagues. It's amazing. Everyone's having fun. But at the same time, too, we have to also realize people want to play. And if you're in the league and you're not playing, you're detrimenting everybody else in the league. You're, you're penalizing everybody else who wants to play. So if you're not up to standard to want to play, then then just bow out or say, hey, you know what? Like the speed of the league is a little bit too much for me. Or, you know what, I'd be better suited for a slower league or a smaller league so that I can have stuff like that. Sam, quiet. So that's the idea. So season eight is going to be a little bit more dramatic. There's going to be some more changes coming into it. Uh, there is going to be a, a change. Uh, we don't know. I don't know what it's going to be yet. But basically, it's going to maybe entail some of the penalties. We've been testing in the queue. It might happen. I'm not guaranteeing it, but this is the one thing I want to try. Um, Techno John, or Comical John, whoever you want to call him, but it's Techno John. He has come in and saved the season a bit for everybody. He's gotten a lot of games in, 24, I think, in a week, which is amazing. If we played Techno John's level, the league would be done in about two weeks. Sam, shut up. Come inside. When your dog starts barking at nothing, settle. Lay down. My little dog, Sammy, over here. She's a great Pyrenees, Old English Bulldog mix. But she loves to bark at everything and anything. But she will fuck you up. She's body checked me a few times, which has been quite funny. But neither here or there. So basically, the way I'm trying to look at this is that I want us to have fun. We have the Vintage League. We have um, the Q. We have the W. I'm going to have one more. I think we're going to end up having... It's going to be... I think it's going to have line changes. It's going to be more in depth. It's going to also have a factor of no penalties. Um, and on top of it too, I just, I just want us to have a good time and play a lot of games. The, the, at the end of the day, a lot of shit's been fucking going on, but what it, it is what it is. But to put it in a little bit more in perspective, we need to play our games. I'm beating a dead horse with this. I keep fucking saying it every season, play your games. Like I said, you have your out is communicate. If you don't communicate, you're out. That's it. I'm not fucking playing the, the nice commission anymore. As you saw the last couple of days, I've been blowing everybody out. I don't care. Like, you know what? We're in a competitive league. Uh, what am I going to sit idly by and just like play my games? I want to win. I'm tired of being in the shitty bill. I'm tired of being demoted and fucking viewpoints by the Wolf and Klein podcast because they're like, where do you see your, your team in five years? I don't want to look at five years from now. I want to look at this season and get my team into the fucking dance. If you want to look five years down the road, Wolfie, go right ahead. Klein, he's revamped his team. He knows he's not going to compete for a championship. You're an anomaly uh, in yourself, Wolf, where you're delusional in your whole thought process and being like, Lindros is a really good player. He's really good. He's going to score me a lot of goals. Well, once post-lockout rolls around, your team ain't going to be around for five years. Your team's going to maybe last another two or three. And then if you don't get anything done in that time period, you ain't getting shit. Then you get other teams like this. Mike Vick, back to the league, playing great. Awesome job, buddy. Keep it up. Uh, Caden. Fucking, you've saved my fucking head enough with these box scores and the uh, the save states, which I greatly appreciate. And that's how you get involved in the league. You do a little bit here and here, and it gets you involved. The Blubber Magazine and the Hockey News with Sean Bell and Tickle Puss, probably the best things that I can wait for every week. I know Puss doesn't like writing big articles, and um, Dickhead and fucking Cum Shot and Pussy Lips, whatever the family's name of, they're all fucking sexual organs or involving any bodily fluids being drenched all over them. Either way, uh, great data, great fucking analysis, just a pleasure to read. Same thing with Belly with his uh, hockey news, um, giving me a kudos, which is great. I don't get to see my team information on there all that often, but uh, I guess that's what happens when you start winning games. Um, I think I'm on my longest winning streak of my career in the W, so I'll take my t uh, 10 or 11 games in a row, even though it says that I have a, an OTL in there. And that's not technically considered a loss. So 
I don't take it. It's a loss in overtime. You had to get to overtime to beat me. So we'll leave it at that. Um, the Segathon went on this past weekend. I heard Nick went 0-5. Uh, <laughs> disrespectful. It's the fall of Segathon. Or not. Nick's probably one of the most elusive players in the league. Uh, he always comes out to dance. And I think it might be a shitty, uh, uh, what's called a Brule Cup Finals hangover, where he finally got there, got a taste for it, and got his ass whopped by some fish poison. But uh, which Sean Bell tends to feed to people in little pellets. But it, neither here or there. Uh, some nice up-and-coming teams this year. Red has been fucking amazing with his Mary Hill alum. Um, but you know what the thing is with Red is that... He's beatable, everybody says it, or the way Ed says it. My wife plays it in the car. Plus, that video that you made about Wolf comp- like talking about his team and then also Red's team saying, he's really good. He can check. He can score. He's, he's really good. My wife listens to that on her thing because I sent it to her to make a video edit, and she saved it. So every time it comes on her Bluetooth, she listens to it and laughs. But Wolfie... Red's actually doing something with the team. This is your first season that you've actually done something since season one or season two. You've been a hot mess ever since. At least I'm not propping my team up to being the second coming of God. But then you got other guys that are in there as well. Uh, Unholy rocking and rolling with his uh, his, his streams. He's going to come back. Is uh, he's He comes in bunches. He's starting to become that type of player that if he loses one or two games in that night, he shuts it down. He doesn't try to overextend himself, and he wants the play to win. I don't blame him, so do I. It's the unholy for a reason. He's going to go into fucking diabolical death march and start kicking the shit out of some teams. Um, Blair, with his team with the Oracles, man, there's some bad brew brewing over there. But uh, it's funny because I wanted to play this, and I think I'm going to end it with it, is actually Blair's... Uh, video, uh, not video, but he sent me, we, we, at the Segathon last year, season, uh, I went up to Minnesota, We and Blair did the first Dark Side interview, half-cocked, shit-faced to the gills, and we did the Dark Side, and I think Blair was sleeping in my lap in Judd's living room upstairs, and we got a really good video with talking about, like, Brandon's parents hating him, and giving him this, uh, the Sega Genesis to be able to make him feel better about himself, but still losing to Blair, uh, it's Nick's robotic cu- uh, daughter, or no, his robotic wife, and Blair actually has his real wife. And then you have Judd <laughs> with Sturgy shoving fucking controller up his ass, like as if he's recreating the the Terminator or T-1000 with the remote up the ass. Maybe he's looking to play some Sturgy with them with the wire fully engulfed in his anus, but either here or there. Um... So the thing is I'm going to end up doing, I think it's probably best that I do this because at the same time I did, um, is that the voicemail itself, I have to pull it up and I'm going to let it play because I haven't even fully heard it through. So we're going to play it. Told you that I had some brand new information. And tonight, first of all, I'd like to make a call on behalf of this club. So tonight, when Nick's real wife and I decided to buy a fake, you know, the robot wife for Nick, we didn't realize that actually those robots were made by uh, Sega Technology. So actually, Nick's Robot life has been playing for me. So, I mean, just like, you know, so then that's where they're going to have to deal with that. I don't know. So, then we also found out that they make the same, the same robot with the same robot with Nintendo, which would be not as to the technology to say that. And then my brother went to so bitch and my mom was like, two times to yeah, turn over against them, so my mom was probably going to find a new car. All right, other piece of news. This is like the biggest book. I'm not trying to be as quiet as well. I am. I am currently in a room by myself. I think I'm going to the back. See that. All right. So after the Tampa Bay trip, we, uh, you know, I was looking through my luggage, and then I saw a hat with 
with figment of imagination hat in my luggage. So then, being a good friend, I thought, ah, well, I get to work tomorrow. And I kind of drive by and drive by and drop it off. All that stuff. Doing the drive. The judge's house on Monday. No, no, it was going to be that Tuesday for that. We want to join the judge's house. I said, yeah, drop off the tent. And all the time. And I, I get out of my car and I just. And then, like, I noticed the moving off by over the head shot. And then, you know, I found that jet in my hand, and I'm walking over there. And then, all of a sudden, I see Techmo fucking Chris and Judd. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to scare me. And then, Judd's like, hey, Techmo, come on over here. I got to show you what I got in my shed. So what, what we're going to do for Friday. So then that's where I thought, oh, they're playing Friday stuff. All right, I'm going to watch you with this plan. Just like, come on, too, man. I hope you need this shed one of these days. And Chad opens it up, and then no one will hold this fucking TV in there with, with that techno fucking, of course, fucking Chris, my fucking ape shit. It's like, yeah, I like, hey, hey. It's like, because like, Chad had two chairs in there with that TV in the shed. And so I was like, oh, man, this is going to be an awesome place to play for, like, and I have to shoot, play the hockey game. But then, I'm so then, like, Chris takes a seat, but then I noticed Jed, like, walked back behind him, and he walked, and, you know, which he grabbed out of the fucking corner of a bowling pin, and he hit Techno Chris over the fucking head. And I'm like, oh, shit, Jed's doing again, he's going to kill him. And he takes Chris Technical Chris kind of knocked out, and then he, like, takes him to the chair, and then finally Technical Chris gets awake, and he's like, why did you do that, Jed? And then Jed's like, you know what, Technical Chris, you always beat me. And you never even knew you were playing on that Twitch or whatever. He started saying that goddamn journey going, like, cool, Jed, but do you leave me? You know how much pain it felt, dog. And so then that's when Chad decided to do this. And then, then Chris said, like, hey, Chad, that's the end. Hey, what do you want to do? do, do, do. And it's like Chad turns and says, hey, yeah, Pierre Turgeon, on your fucking team. Didn't you know what time you could eat for Pierre Turgeon? And then Tech on Chris, you know what can I do with Chad? And then Chad said, Chad, like a Turgeon. Going for the very first time. And then that's her technique. Oh, I did it. You took it. And Chad says, like, that doesn't matter anymore because you used Jeremy Blunick in that program. Song. Uh, it reminds me of losing. So then Chad hooked up these, uh, you know, those car tape. End of message. Can we rip? So. I couldn't hear the rest of it because Blair is probably blabbing on for a little bit. But <laughs> given that, I really hope that the video recorded enough of that audio because that was fucking crazy. And I just talked about Sturgy getting a fucking controller up his ass and now he's talking about <laughs> Sammy Smith getting a bowling pin upside the head and then singing Jeremy Spoken by Pierre Turgeon. Um, but either way, guys, this is an amazing league. I appreciate all the work you guys are putting into by playing your games. The people that don't play your games, get your dick out of your ass and start fucking some people. Because we got a season to move along here. And we're getting into the dog days of summer. So which the W is going to probably go on to um, the DL for probably a couple months. And then we're going to be kicking it back up in the, in August. And a little piece. We got the Dark Side of 95 tournament coming soon. In the later part of the year. And I'll be sending out some information. So live in Toronto again. For anybody who's interested. We're just leaving it at that. Enjoy your week and get to the fucking chopper and play your games. I don't care who your daddy is or what does he do. I'm going to fuck him up in the helicopter, in the chopper, down on the ground. I'm from governor of California. Fuck you, Brittany. I'm going to fuck your titties later. And all the other people out there, fuck you.